Hey everyone, how's it going? Today I wanted to talk about something that I'm probably gonna laugh during this video, but honestly, it's something I shouldn't be laughing at because it just pisses me off like none other. And it's about insurance contracts and negotiations. And yes, I have covered this topic before, but I've got some new inside information from one of my patients that I'll share with you guys. For those of you guys that are new to the channel, I vlog in the name Investing Doc. I own my own private practice. I am an internal medicine physician and I am opening two new locations at the time of this video. So trying to grow it from just one location to three locations in the next 90 days. And I like to rant about what that's like. All right, so I've ranted before about insurance companies and I truly think they're the devil. They're just straight evil. It's that time of year again to where we need to negotiate our rates with two of the insurance payers. Those of you guys that may be following some of my previous videos will know that I argued back and forth with Cigna and I actually got them to raise our rates over 20%. I think it was like 23% or something like that. It was an amazing raise, but it was also because our first rates were just god awful. They were terrible. And the problem is, is that for those of you guys that are starting out your own practice or planning to start up your own practice, I thought commercial insurance would give us a reasonable rate to start the practice with. Nah. We were in a desirable area. Insurance companies basically said this is a take it or leave it scenario. There's no negotiation. We don't need you. So essentially, I had to accept crappy rates for three years because all your insurance terms for the very first contracts are three-year terms. I had to accept it for the first three years. And then... I could finally renegotiate. And then that's when I went to Cigna and said, screw you guys, I have this many patients. I sent them all the data. I thought I was doing an amazing job. And the only way that I thought that I was getting more money out of them is by sending them all this data about lives that we carry, how many Cigna patients we have, and how much benefit we were offering all of their clients, their patients. Yeah, well, it turns out that I met a patient who is a VP with one of the insurance companies. And they were kind enough to let me in on a little secret about how wrong I was. I had a little bit of extra time with my visit. And I will be honest that I let it go into this rant. And if you're watching, if this insurance person is watching this video, I'm not going to spill your name. Of course, that's a HIPAA violation. And I'm not even gonna say what company you work for, but I do appreciate all the inside info that you told me. Basically, this individual came and I kind of started telling him about Cigna. Now, you know it's not Cigna because they don't work for Cigna, I'll tell you that right away. But I told him about what happened with Cigna and what we had to do and how I thought I got a raise because I put all this data together and gave it to him. And this person basically told me, well, I don't work for Cigna, but I can tell you something, that's not how it works with our organization. We wouldn't care about your data one bit. <laughs> I couldn't help but just laugh at this person during the visit being like, what? I thought that's how I got my 20 something percent raise was I gave them all this beautiful information printed out for them. Then they told me something that actually makes a lot of sense is that there's a huge employer here that has Cigna. And looking back after I ran the data, I think this person is telling the truth. What this person told me was that if there is an organization that has a lot of lives covered. Let's just say Microsoft. I don't know what the main insurance player for Microsoft is, but let's just say that it's Cigna. I'm just gonna throw it out there. If I have quite a few Cigna patients that are for Microsoft, this insurance VP told me that the biggest thing that is gonna get me a pay raise is one of the people in HR for Microsoft who has that Cigna contract to pick up the phone and call their representative pissed off that all of their clients are complaining that they can't see their doctor anymore and they need to fix it right now. The bigger the organization, the bigger the pay raise for the doctor. And then it hit me. I went back and I did the data because I'm talking about Cigna. Now this VP doesn't work for Cigna, so I know it's starting to get a little bit confusing because I'm trying not to divulge what company this VP works for. But I went back and I data mined our Cigna patients and I saw that, yeah, the Cigna people that we saw that I sent them all the data for came from one large employer. And they must have potentially complained to that organization that they're not gonna be able to see me. And I bet that's why I got a big pay raise. It wasn't all the data that I sent. It was that someone went to bat for me for that organization. They basically said, hey, we like Brad. Don't go out of network with this guy. 
And that's probably what got me the 20% pay raise. So this VP essentially told me that all that other BS that I was doing, that I was prepping for the time for my contract renewal, they gave me a heads up and said it's a waste of time. Unless someone who has a lot of lives under that organization, again, I'll just use Cigna as the blanket one, if they don't pick up the phone and go to bat for me while I'm going through these contract negotiations, it doesn't matter. I'm not getting a huge pay raise. That's the only thing that matters is they're paying customers going to bat for me on my behalf. And there's something that just feels so slimy about that, that I have to turn my patients towards like, uh, not only leave me Google reviews, but now they have to go to their insurance company saying how much they love me to give me an actual pay raise. I don't know. It just feels so much more sleazy than I initially thought. And I already knew the insurance companies are what I would consider as the devil. But it just feels so much worse basically begging my patients to be put in the middle to go to bat for me. Although I don't do custody battles, I imagine this being like a divorced couple putting their kids in the between kind of this divorcing couple. It just seems wrong. But it's the business of medicine. And there's a lot of things wrong about the business of medicine. And I think that's part that I have to try to separate from the practice of medicine, the loving my patients, the going to bat for my patients, is that the business of medicine is really murky at times, and it really has some crappy parts like this. So I will laugh about how just ridiculous this whole scenario is, that that's the game that you got to play. And hopefully, if you get, all it takes is one person. If you get that HR representative for Cigna that works for Microsoft or whatever made up entity you want to put in your mind, if they go to bat for you, that's the only thing that matters. Doesn't matter if you have 5,000 lives or one life, is that the company that has the most lives for that insurance company, if they go to bat for you or the number of people with Cigna, if they start calling their insurance rep complaining about why is Brad going out of network, that's the only way to get an increased rate, a very good increased rate. All right, you guys, I just wanted to share that little tidbit of information. So knowing that, now that we're going through this negotiation, we got to play dirty. So I guess we have to go to those patients that have these insurance contracts and basically say, hey, if you love us, tell your insurance company about it because we're about to leave them because they are paying us absolute crap in the setting of record inflation. And just like a divorcing couple, unfortunately, I'm going to have to put the kids in between this one and the kids are the patients. And I love my patients and I hate that I have to put them in this scenario, but it's the way that they do business. And I either have to get a pay raise by playing their game or I got to keep the crappy payments coming from them or go out of network, which I don't really want to do. I want to stay in network with them. So I figured I'm going to have to play their dirty game. I'll let you guys know how it goes. See y'all next time.